Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanolays at Dawn. I'm your host, Shed of Fury333, with another set of exhibition matches for you all. And today we're going to start with a match between Dimefront and Toph. I'm curious to see if Toph has changed any. One thing I've I realized looking through all these replays is that matchmaking is the only way you can do elo changes, so I figure maybe Toph's been practicing a lot. I don't know if their elo reflects their actual skill. Let's find out. So, we'll do so. Dimefront starting out. Still on their gunship kick. This is actually from a few days ago, so they were probably still on that gunship kick from last week. And off on the other hand, going for, looks like, the jump bot factory. Which I'm curious about on this map of all maps, because this map doesn't really cliff much. In fact, everything is bot pathable. There's nothing on this map that is not bot pathable. So I'm not sure what the motivation was for jump bots. They have no map. Okay, it's not entirely true. These walls are not bot pathable, but there's. That's the one small advantage is jumping onto the ramp without going through this small ramp here. And maybe jumping up here. There's a couple small things you can do with jump bots, but at this point it has been revealed, so Toph has been revealed to be using moderators primarily, not even going for anything special, just moderators. And why do I not have selections proper? Come on, game. Work with me here. Not you. Okay, that was weird. Anyway, sorry about that. So yeah, with a couple moderators coming up for Tov and... Alright, sorry about that. Let's continue. So, yeah, Dimefriend going for Rapiers, Tov going for moderators, and Dimefriend... Not really sure how they're planning on... I mean, Tov with the moderators is going to be reasonably able to get rid... Uh, well, actually, yeah, reasonably able to get rid of the Rapiers. Each rapier has 1,100 health, so with two moderators... Oh, two moderators aren't enough. They will need three. Toph is building extra moderators, but by that time, the rapier should have arrived. So Dimefriend not really going for as much of a dedicated rush as they have been in the previous games we've watched with their gunship play. But Toph, on the other hand, not going for a whole lot of dedicated anti-air. They are going for an Archangel, but that's, like, a minute from now. They're going to start building. It's going to be up two minutes from now at best. Probably longer than that. So the rapier will have plenty of time. Like, Dimefriend has most of this game really to just mess around with this rapier, or multiple rapiers. Because there's no real hurry. Top isn't going to have dedicated anti-air for a while. Two mod raiders aren't really a threat, although actually with the defender they would be. But they're certainly too slow to be a massive threat. So if Dimefriend is aware of where they are, which they aren't actually. Dimefriend, if they are aware, it might have been just a little bit off to the side from the vision from the rapier, but... That's about it, really. At this point, Dimefriend is basically free to do whatever they like. I mean, the moderators are going to be a problem, but moderators aren't a big deal unless there are three of them. Or like I said, I guess two with the defender also works, but... Oh yeah, that's right. I thought the selection thing was screwing up again. So moderators... Not a bad choice, but like I said, now we're finally getting to the Archangel. And Dimefriend with... Couple blast wings, couple rapiers. Really hasn't built that much either, or that quickly. In fact, Toph. Oh, they're not expanding as quickly as I would think they should. But they could expand a lot faster. They just haven't. They okay. There's the freaker. No, that's. Where's the Where's the constable? Not freaker. Where's that constable? Okay, it that is useless. Just for reference, there isn't enough metal being pulled in for this con for that constable to be of use. It really should just. Okay, it's probably a mistake then. It should be going off and building other stuff. It's... Assisting isn't going to help any. Especially with the rapiers coming in now. And also... The energy is desperately needed in order for assistance to even be close to mattering. Like right now, as it is, Toph has less than 10 energy. So they desperately need to be built up, building up those solar plants. And at this point, they're about to lose the commander. And I believe this is actually since the most recent set of patches where the commanders have storage. We'll check here. It looks like... Well, maybe not. Okay, I'm not entirely sure if this is the update with commander storage or not. The most recent version of the game has been patched so that this storage here is actually attached to your commander. So if the commander dies, you only have your base income. You don't have whatever stored metal or energy. You just have your income versus spending, and that's it. There's no buffer. No, this looks like it's going to matter right now, though. Tough isn't in a terrible position, but my goodness, is Dimefriend in a nice position taking the northeast, as well as taking the area right outside of their main base. So overall, Dimefriend is comfy. Whereas Toph, on the other hand, is just locked into a corner. 
Granted, they haven't really... They haven't seen anything acting locked in a corner, but they kind of are. Or at least they're expanding very slowly. I was hoping that after the experience they've been having in the 1v1 room, they'd be expanding a lot faster. But no, it appears that they're not really looking around, seeing where their idle builders are as much, or setting up... Well, setting up everything around them. Like, setting up all these queues for building up metal extractors. That's a typical thing you need to do in this game, is to queue up construction like that. And Diamond as well, actually, could be doing a bit more. But for the most part, yeah, you want to make sure that you are queuing a bunch of economic construction. It generally pays off. Rarely, it doesn't, but usually it's worth it. At any rate, Toph looks like they're going for... Is this is this the jump bot equivalent of the warrior rush? Like the old thing I, th I believe RAR did, where it was like two warriors and a commander. Now it's two moderators and a commander with the jump bot factory. I can't say I totally agree with that, but it's an interesting approach, or an interesting change of the approach. Anyway, with the Archangel up. Bit of... Okay, bit of a threat to the rapiers, but honestly not that much. If the rapiers can just fly away... Okay, I... Never mind, what am I saying? Two rapiers died. Two rapiers died with just the Archangel. It was a threat to the Archangel. I mean, I thought the rapiers would just run away. Like, it's a threat, I suppose, in the sense that it pushes them away, but... No, they didn't run away fast enough. They indeed died. So that was... More, that was not an empty threat, for sure. At any rate... Toph? Actually... Putting Dynefrain in a bit of a defensive position. Dynefrain does have half the map, though. And Toph... Starting to get half the map, but considerably more slowly. As well, Dying Throne with the Spiderbot Factory just being built up. Not sure they have planned for that. I would imagine... Oh, Hermits, there we go. I say, I'd imagine, like, Venom Hermit. Or just Hermit. Yeah, Hermit makes a lot of sense against moderators. Although, so do Fleas. Lots and lots and lots of Fleas. Like, three or four dozen Fleas would make a lot of sense. Just to run through, deal with the moderators. Although, with the Pyro coming up, that's not going to be an option. So, yeah, okay. Overall, Hermits are the safest choice. Definitely agree on that one. So, Venom Hermit compared... Well, Venom Hermit up against Pyro Jack. Actually, Toph? Toph with the Jack could become problematic. The Pyros, the Hermits are basically helped to counter that. That's the whole point. But, yeah, the, the Jacks, they can get up to the Hermits. The Hermits will be slowed down because of the Moderators. The Jacks have quite a bit more HP than a Hermit, and a fair bit more firepower when they get close up. So this could still be very dangerous for Dynefreund, and Toph's economy getting more on track, but at this point, ironically, they don't have any construction assistance in their factory, even though earlier they did, and it was of no use. Now they need it and are accessing, and they are just half a minute away from having a caretaker and thus having it properly handled. So yeah, assistance on the construction only works if you have the resources to do it, and if you have the resources to do it, then do it. And, oh, not so much for that. I mean, the Venom served its purpose to help kill the Pyro, but Hermits are apparently not as accurate as they might like to believe. So, at any rate, Dimefrain does still have the economy to be able to deal with that Toph, however, with the Caretaker up just about now. That will basically get rid of all that excess. So that dealt with. We have Firewalkers coming in as well. Good choice dealing with all of these defenses that Dimefriend has. Along with the Hermits as well. Like, really, Toph is setting up to deal with the Hermits. I I don't know if I'm really as impressed that impressed with Toph's economic situation, but I don't disagree with their choices of units. It's a little bit, I mean, it's a little bit unusual to go for the jump bot factory in the first place, but as far as it goes for being in the jump bot factory, I'd say it's not a bad choice. I have the pyros to help deal with frontline assault units, especially the hermits. Also having the jacks to deal with the hermits once the jacks are set up. The firewalker to also help deal with them and any defenses that are built up, because of course they would be. Not so much because of spider bot factory, but because Dianfrain has built up a lot of defenses. And Toph, I'm not sure if they even are aware of these, actually. Mm, okay, they're apparently aware that there's something over to the northeast. Which they can reasonably assume are defenses, which they are. That is absolutely correct. Actually, the Pyro... Pyro's not doing a bad job dealing with... I mean, when the Hermits are all lined up, too, that's when the Pyro really shines. And the Pyro can do the hit and runs. 
So, yeah, Pyros are a good choice here. The only downside is that there's only one of them. If there was more than one, this would work beautifully, but having only one does rather limit their effectiveness. And right there is the Firewalker finally getting off a shot. And threatening Dimefront's commander very slightly, but not really enough, I don't think, for Dimefront to care. This is not where Firewalker shines. Firewalkers shine dealing with a bunch of clumped up units, especially if they're not moving, or a bunch of defenses over to the northeast, which I don't believe Toph is directly aware of, or getting rid of economy too, but really it's getting rid of defenses. That's what the Firewalker's for. At any rate, where? Okay, more jacks. There we go. There's the jacks. I was wondering where Toph is going to start setting those up. And there's one already coming to the commander. And not a whole lot to deal with. I mean, there's some moderators to deal with it. It'd be kind of nice if the pyros were still alive at this point in order to help deal with this. But I'm not sure if it matters. That jack is just going to go straight for the commander. The commander needs to jump. Dimefront, are you jumping? No, Dimefront's letting a commander die. Down goes their commander. And apparently this was actually not the update where the storage is gone. I don't see any storage buildings on the map, and the commander just died. So yeah, dying friends, loss of a commander isn't a big deal right now, because... Well, it's... They just have so much economy right now. Like, they have enough of an economic advantage over Toph that losing their commander wasn't a major blow. Although Toph losing the center, that will be a bit of a problem. I'm a bit surprised that... Okay, I guess they're trying to regroup the jacks, because once they get that regrouped, then they're going to want to throw stuff in there. Help deal with the Hermits. And get some Jacks in there, get some Pyros in there. There's the Pyros being built up, so once the Pyros are up and the Jacks are there, that should do the trick. And the Scuttle should help as well. Actually, the Scuttle's for the Crab, wherever that is. There it is. Now there's... Finally, the Jacks coming in there. This is what I mean. The Jacks basically just deal with this. And for... Not for cost exactly, but pretty close. It does... They do have to kill about four of the Hermits in order to be really effective, like, each. And ideally not stand in fire. That doesn't help. That helps nobody. But with the Firewalkers helping soften things up, that's quite handy. Now, if there was one more Firewalker, this would work a bit better, as this Firewalker over to the southwest looks like it's about to die. I don't really imagine its life is going to be continuing far much longer than it is right now, and it's... Yeah, it's not continuing at all. That Firewalker trying to be saved by the Pyro, and almost. So close to being saved. But unfortunately for it, not quite. So with that Firewalker down, the Southwest is relatively safe. Dimefrain's economic advantage appears secured, and with the Hermits in the back of the base, that should just about end the game. So, I mean, Toph had some good unit choices, but their their economic growth was way too slow. Like, they were economically behind the whole time. They did not send any expansion units around basically until about the 3 or 4 minute mark. And starting with moderators is really risky. I'm not quite sure what the motivation was. It's not a bad idea against light gunship fire. Like, just one or two gunships. Moderators will work moder like, will work okay. If there's enough to one-shot. They're not great, though. I mean... If you're against Banshees, Pyros are a better bet. If you're against Rapiers... It's kind of tough. I mean... Pyros are... Actually, no. Puppies at that point are the best bet. Like, puppies are wonderful anti-air for jump by factories. At least for gunships and a light amount of them. So, I don't know if Top would do that, but that's the thing to do. It's a weird, subtly counterintuitive suggestion, because you are basically saying spend 50 metal in order to kill a thing, but you are spending less metal than your opponent, and your opponent is dropping everything into your base. So you get to reclaim, and that reclaim allows you to then build up more units and expand faster, and your opponent is essentially donating metal this entire time. So that's still effective. But at this point, no, it's... This game is over. Like there, I don't see anything Toph could really do... Especially having just lost that scuttle there, which was the one thing they had to get rid of the crab. And yeah, with that, they throw in the towel. But tough. It's really just a matter of expansion at this point. Unit choice was fine. Wasn't necessarily the best, but it was generally... It was good. It made sense. It... Like, there was a clear logic to the choice, so that was fine. But there just wasn't enough money to make those choices count, or make enough of them that outside of the first seven minutes of the game... 
not much that was done had a massive consequence. Anyway, it was interesting to see how they're doing at this point, given that I don't know how much matchmaking they're playing, so I don't know how accurate their elo rating is, and I would say at this point it is still fairly accurate. Anyway, Wanderlust with Malric and North Chilean G will be our next map and game, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple moments. <laughs> 